Hey, welcome back to my garden. It is already mid-October, which is just crazy to me, but I wanted to wrap up my first garden season in ever, actually. It's not just my first garden season at my new house. It's my first garden season ever. So I want to wrap it up and show you what we're working with mid-October. So let's go take a peek. This was my potato bed, and now it's all cleared out except for the garlic that I just planted last week. So that is ready for the winter. And then over in this bed, I have the Brussels sprouts cleared out, which is gonna be the first obvious difference in this bed. I also already harvested a lot of the carrots, but I left some that were super small just to see if they would get any bigger. And I've also heard that after a frost, the carrots will get a little bit sweeter. So I don't know, I, I thought I would leave these in here and see, kind of test that out a little bit because I didn't plant carrots anywhere else for the fall. So that's really my only way to see that. Um, this is all cleared out. This was where the zucchini and spaghetti squash originally were, and I didn't plant anything else here. The spinach is actually really just wanting to grow. I had a great year for the spinach. I ripped a lot of this out when I harvested the last uh, last good amount of spinach. And I thought, hey, might as well leave some of it behind to see if it keeps growing, and it did. So I've got another good harvest in here before the frost comes. Swiss chard, loving this weather. I don't know, this thing has gone through the smallest little bouts of growth and then just explosion so we're currently in the explosive state and i need to come harvest some of this to i think just can up or freeze the greens because i found that that's one of the ways i actually am enjoying eating them and then this is the pineapple sage so you can see it's starting to get those flowers which i think is pretty cool i'm excited to see those turn red and see that flower but I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with that yet. Probably will harvest it just so it doesn't go to waste, but haven't made plans. Then in this back bed, this is where I started a newer set of green beans. So this, this is a different type of green bean than what I had. I had blue lake bush beans here before, and I can't remember the bean that I put here. I'll throw it up on the screen if I can find the seed packet, but they're a lot skinnier and um, I don't know, actually just skinnier. They're about the same length that the other ones have been growing, but it's kind of harder to see them because I keep thinking that they're the stems, but it's actually the beans. So these ones are a little bit trickier to find. And then over here, these ones are the dragon tongue bush bean. So I'm not sure. I thought these were supposed to turn purple, but I actually, I came and harvested some earlier. Oh, like here. So I thought they were supposed to turn all purple, but they might just have some purple striping on them and that might be all the purple it gets. So I've kind of been harvesting them at this stage actually. Oh no, I'm gonna pull that one now. He always acts like he wants to eat them, but then he just spits them out, so whatever. All right, so this is what I need to work on today. Actually, there, that's like one onion that I must have left behind that started to grow when the rest got cleared out. So I thought that that was funny. I'm gonna leave that there. But these tomatoes are just looking sad and sickly and they need to come out. The tomatoes, I don't even know if they're gonna taste good. I've heard that they can get bitter once the vine that they're on dies. I mean, there's some greenery, but these are looking pretty bad. So I don't know, I'll try them. I'll cut into one and taste them and see if they taste good. And if they do, then I'll, I don't know, figure out something to do. I know you can't can tomatoes after they have the vine has died because it changes the pH level. So I won't be doing any canning projects with these tomatoes, but I might just make like a salsa or I don't know. With the green ones, I thought I would try a, a green, like salsa verde or something, because I do have quite a few there. So I'll have to taste them a little bit and see what we're thinking. But if you have any ideas for 
the last bit of tomatoes for the year that you don't want to can, uh, let me know what you usually do with those. And then the basil plants in between, I'll harvest those soon. I want to get everything out of here before the first frost, so I'll probably do that soon too. In this little fabric pot here, I just have like five bean plants in here too. So these were just extra seeds that I had in my hand, but I didn't have room in that end of the bed for them. So I just threw them here and figured why not give them a try. They're growing slower than the ones in the raised bed, which I thought was kind of funny because I think I planted them on the same day. So seeing the difference between the pot and the end of the raised bed is kind of cool. And then these were the beans that, basically my whole garden is beans right now. These were the beans that I planted towards the end of the summer. So they weren't necessarily my fall beans, but they're still kicking. I've gotten a lot of good harvests off of these ones. And see, like they're thicker than that skinnier one over there. So I know it's a different variety. I just don't know what they were. Ozzy, do you want this one? Oh, is that yummy? Oh, no. Blech. Yum? Oh. Then the rest of this bed is peppers. So I have a few more Hungarian hot wax peppers here, a few more chilies, and then these are the jalapenos and bell peppers over there. And actually I wanna show you those cause I was impressed with the size, but um, habaneros too. I've got the last little bit of habaneros. And I think what I'm gonna try to do is overwinter this habanero plant and the jalapeno plant next to it there because that seemed to be the best producer and they're actually getting like pretty good size. They were, yeah, that's a decent one too. They were, I mean, they weren't this small, but they were on the smaller side. It looks like towards the end of the year, they got a little bit bigger. Maybe I just let them grow more, but um, yeah, I was impressed with this one. So I'm gonna try to overwinter a couple of my pepper plants. So stay tuned if you wanna see how I do that and if it works. So here was that bell pepper plant and look at, I mean, it's huge, but this was supposed to be an orange bell pepper. So I thought if I left it on there, they would turn orange and it just doesn't seem to be doing that. So I might just have to harvest some green, which is fine. But um, yeah, I was, I thought that was very cool how big those ones were. The last thing left are the loofahs. So this is about the driest that I have so far. And it is a little bit lighter. So I've seen that the loofah you don't want to harvest them when they're like dark green like this. You want to wait until they get dry and a little bit lighter because that means it's drying out on the inside. So this one, I only have three here. And then on this one, I've got this guy, two, three, four, five. So I've got five over here. One's starting to dry out too actually so I've been waiting I know you want to let them dry out on the vine if possible but most people can't because the growing season is only so long and it takes like 120 days or so for the loofah to fully mature and develop and then it takes another however many days for it to dry out and die so it doesn't do that very often on the vine. So I've been seeing ways that people can dry them out if you have to harvest them green, which I might have to do because if you let it go through a frost, I've heard it just gets mushy and is gross. And I really wanna get some sponges. Um, I'm excited. I think that would be fun Christmas gifts. So um, yeah, so I've got my basket. I really need to handle these tomatoes today. I. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to get rid of them. 
I have a lot of tomatoes in my freezer that I'm planning on making. I was gonna see if I could do just canned diced tomatoes, but I'm not sure if you can dice them and can them after having them frozen. So if you know the answer to that and you don't mind sharing, please let me know what you think. I'm just worried that they might be a little bit too mushy after being frozen and then trying to dice them, but we'll see. Um, so if I can't, I'll just like, you know, puree them up and make a tomato sauce or whatever. But I'm feeling good about my tomatoes. I had a great year with them. They were lots of fun. These ones got to go. So I'm going to take them out. I also want to take out the peppers. And possibly the Swiss chard. The problem is going to be dedicating a lot of time over the next few days to like preserve all of this stuff, but I just got to do it. It's been so hard to get myself to come out here and wrap up the garden just because like the weather has been really crappy. It's been raining. It's been cold. The last thing I want to do is come out here and put my garden to bed because it's sad anyway, but I have to just do it. So come spend some time with me while I wrap up my tomato year. If you've been here since the beginning, you already know my tomato journey. But if you're new here, I wanted to fill you in so you can see a little bit more about why this is such a big moment for me. So I had big dreams of my tomato plants in the garden. I was going to fill up this entire bed and that back portion of the in-ground bed that we have there behind me right now. That was going to be filled up with tomatoes. I started honestly probably a hundred tomato plants in the beginning of the year for this garden and they didn't work out. They were super leggy when they came up. I had a hard time figuring out my grow light situation because I thought maybe the lights weren't strong enough or they weren't lowered enough. So I ran a few different experiments, if you will, to see what I could try to get tomato plants to work better for me, and nothing really worked. So I went to a local nursery and picked up some already started tomato plants to put in the garden, and you can see my dreams of having hundreds of tomato plants dwindled down to maybe 10, 10 or 11 tomato plants, which I was fine. I got a ton of tomatoes from here. I don't know what I would have done with tomatoes from 100 plants, but I was just dreaming big. So a lot of these plants are from the nursery, but all of the ones towards the far right side of the bed are my San Marzano's and my Arkansas Travelers, and those were some that I was able to rescue. They started so small, especially compared to the nursery plants, but they you know, caught up pretty quickly. And I'm just so proud to see all the tomatoes that have come from those plants that I was able to grow myself. And the San Marzano's I just fell in love with. They were so delicious. So that's my little full circle story and why I'm so proud to have these plants. But time to take them down. Time to start over for next year and maybe find some better success with starting more plants on my own. Honestly, the ones I got kind of just seemed like an accident that they worked out well. So I'm not sure what I did, but I'm going to do my best this year to try again, find some different varieties that I really like, and try to grow them myself. I'll always have that nursery as a backup if none of the ones I plant work out, but it was very fulfilling to see the ones that I was actually able to do myself and get some really great yields from. So if you want to go check out those videos, they're on my YouTube channel back in the beginning stages of planting all these seeds. You can go through that frustration and confusing time with me of trying to figure it out and see where I ended up. It's pretty cool. There we go. Empty tomato poles. So I guess it's finally wrapped up. I've got the basil in between. Now you can see it a lot better. I wonder if I should leave it for a few days just to see if it's got anything left in it now that there's nothing blocking its way. Um, but yeah, all right, so I've got the tomatoes done. I think I should move on to the peppers just to get the last of them, make sure I do get everything that I can before any frost. It's not supposed to frost in the next few days, but I might not be able to get out here again in the next few days. So gotta take advantage of the opportunities I have. So let's harvest some peppers.
Unfortunately, the peppers worked about the same as the tomatoes. So I started a lot of different seeds. I was going to try a lemon drop pepper that I was really excited about. I had jalapenos and the Hungarian hot wax. I had different bell peppers all started and none of them worked out for me. These are all nursery plants. None of them were started myself, which is okay. I still had a great year. I still had a great garden, but I think I would have been a little bit more proud of myself if I was able to start these from seed. When I'm going through and harvesting the last little bit here, I was actually pretty impressed with how many peppers I got here because I've been harvesting quite a bit towards the end of the year thinking that they were wrapping up. So to be able to fill this basket one last time was really cool. I did want to remove the plants and I was trying to cut them at the roots so that I could leave the roots in the soil and not really disturb it too much. But here's a little tip for gardening. Don't leave your shears outside. I left probably every pair of shears that I own outside in the garden at one point throughout the year and they got rained on, they got cold, they were outside overnight. So they've lost a little bit of their spring and just ability to cut through these tough stems. So I wasn't really able to cut the stems too close to the soil. So I end up just ripping most of these out. Not sure if that's going to have a negative effect on my soil because I am, you know, disturbing it this little bit, but just know that that wasn't necessarily my original plan. But uh, yeah, it's pretty cool to see this all cleaned up and to have those last peppers out of the garden. So now I just got to figure out what to do with them. So if you have any pepper tips for someone who is trying to start enjoying spicy a little bit more, please send them my way. I already got a lot of seeds for my 2024 garden year, and a couple of the ones I got were the habanada and the natapino. I just love the names, but basically they're the habanero and jalapeno versions that don't have too much spice. So I'm really excited to try those next year, and I think that that will be something I can actually enjoy eating myself while my husband gets the spicier versions of those peppers. But I still want to try to push myself a little bit and enjoy spicy things. I really like jalapeno poppers and like the combination with the cream cheese and just cooking the pepper a little bit seems like a more manageable heat level for me. So I'm hoping to find some jalapeno popper type inspired recipes that I can use with all of these because I did get a lot of jalapenos. But yeah, if you have anything coming to mind feel free to throw it in the comments because I'd love to get some inspiration. Not a bad pepper harvest. So I left the habanero plant and one of the jalapeno plants that I want to keep and overwinter. I ripped the rest out and I left the super chili peppers because not a lot of them were red. I've harvested a lot off of these but I didn't want to harvest all the little green ones because I don't want to get them confused with the Hungarian hot wax peppers that are super small that I picked and I mean I don't think a frost is coming right around the corner so maybe these can ripen and I can make one last batch of dehydrated peppers to do some kind of like pepper powder thing. So that's that. I left quite the mess and what's super funny is I think those are daisies. I planted them towards the end of the summer and I really wanted to see them come up but yeah maybe next year. All right, so the last thing that I wanted to do out here today was take this rosemary plant and put it into a pot that I can keep, um, honestly, probably just in the house for the winter. I'm thinking of bringing the rosemary, the lavender that I have potted over there. Um, I started some oregano and some thyme up front. I 
have seen that those are a perennial. However, in Michigan, people haven't had the best luck um, like having rosemary come back after a hard winter. I have no idea what this winter is gonna be like. Last winter was kind of mild. We didn't get a ton of like really bitter cold days. And I don't think we really got as much snow as we were expecting either because we never even really had to do too much snow removal here at the new house. So who knows what it's gonna be like, but I don't wanna risk it. I wanna see if I can overwinter this rosemary, if at all possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it into a pot so that I can take it out. I did see, you know, some people say that their rosemary does well, like when it's in the ground, but in a raised bed, it freezes more because it's not like underground, it's above ground. So um, the soil might get a little bit colder than the ground would. So if it was planted in the ground, I might not do this, but since it is in a raised bed, I'm gonna go ahead and try. It doesn't take, what, five minutes and to potentially continue to harvest off of it throughout the winter if it keeps growing and have it next year, why not give it a try? So I'm gonna do that really quick. All right, well, that's really all I have for today. I feel so accomplished that I came out here and did that. Looking out into the garden and seeing all those dead tomato plants was just breaking my heart a little bit. And it was just a running to-do list of things that I wanted to come out here and take care of before that lingering frost kind of comes around. So feels like a big accomplishment to come out here and do all of that. So thanks for helping me stay accountable and get my booty out here to show you guys that update. Um, I did want to just say a quick thank you to all of the people who have been commenting recently. I've seen a few people who are also in Michigan comment and so that's been really fun for me. You know with my journey on YouTube just starting out and being new to it, um, still being very beginner and very small with my channel, every like, every subscribe, every comment means the world to me. So thank you all so much for being here and for just participating in this with me. It's been really, um, it's been really fulfilling. It's, you know, awesome to see all of this grow, but then to have like a friend in it with me and learning alongside me has really meant the world to me. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I hope wherever you are, if you're gardening, if you're just watching, if you're dreaming about your garden, I hope everything is going well. And um, if you do garden next year, I hope it grows amazingly for you. Um, I have a few more food preservation type projects to wrap up, so I will bring you along for those. I wanna try making gnocchi with my potatoes, so that might be my next project. But um, regardless, if you wanna stick around and if you wanna hang out with me as we continue to go into the next year of gardening, like I said, this was my first year, so I learned a lot. If you wanna look back on any of those old videos and see what this looks like when I first started, if you just joined and you're seeing it now, um, been a big change so go ahead and take a peek at how my husband and I have built this garden and I'd love to hear your thoughts so please keep commenting please keep liking and if you'd like to subscribe please that really does mean the world all right now that I've rambled on a little bit um I think that was everything I wanted to cover and everything I wanted to do out here so 
it's time to go make some dinner with maybe some tomatoes and peppers. All right, thanks. I'll see you on the next one. Bye guys.